Back and withers, we're assessing for back pain primarily. If there are any lesions there, we'd note them, areas of hair loss, but certainly good firm palpation along where the saddle is, as well as up in the lumbar region behind the saddle to assess for back pain. Uh, as far as tag galls and wounds, I'll usually um, mention those at the same time because they're both related, you know, both wounds. But wounds on the legs, as far as interference marks, are usually what you put down in the wound category, or if a horse fell and had a wound that occurred, an injury. So um, you might note it uh, as well as write down where it's at and how severe it is. On tack galls, usually you're looking, you know, in the girth area. Um, sometimes horses will have problems uh, where the bit rides in the mouth, so you'll put that under the tack gall region. Um, after we take a heart rate uh, in order to do a CRI or a cardiac recovery index, we'll watch the horse's gait, evaluate for signs of lameness, uh, any abnormal way of going, and we use a typical one to five scale as far as lameness, um, the AAEP recommendations for grading lameness, and typically horses certainly that are uh, grade three are not allowed to start competition. So grade, grade two and grade one, we usually evaluate them on an individual basis, whether they have evidence of a soft tissue injury and, and make a decision based on the whole picture. Um, but we'd write that down, not in grades here, but we'd write down A or B, whatever you saw. Uh, and then in palsy, we're just watching the horse, the horse's willingness to move forward as well as the horse's springiness and gait and how his limbs uh, move in flight. So, and, and again, grade that on a ABC um, status. So the other thing we, we look at uh, in general is a horse's attitude, not just while he's standing there, but also as he moved, up, moved off is a horse, you know, looking around, got his ears up and willingness to, to do what the, the groom or the rider ask him as he's leading the horse off. Mm -hmm. uh, and the overall impression, I may or may not tell you that letter, um, it's basically a, a, a summation of all the other parameters. So as the day goes on, you'll probably get a good idea that, you know, if there's an A and a B, I might give an overall of an A minus, but each, each veterinarian will be a little bit different there. And certainly we want to sign it, um, especially if we eliminate a horse uh, for any reason, it be it a grade three lameness or a metabolic problem, I'm going to sign my name fully and, and uh, describe the reason for elimination. But otherwise at each check, we want this card filled out uh, in com complete manner and then you can just write my initials down or whatever vet you scribe for. So this side of the card um, is, is where the pre-ride examination is recorded as well as the final examination. Another thing I might mention as far as attitude or overall impression, certainly disorderly horses we'd want to um, evaluate and some horses we don't allow to, to start, you know, if it's an unruly stallion or whatnot, uh, put a mark uh, or describe, you know, the horse might kick uh, when we're assessing muscle tone or anal tone or e even certainly horses that rear and strike and are really unruly, we've, we've um, not allowed those horses to start competition. So that, that's one other thing about attitude that you might list there uh, at the bottom of the, the paper. And then as the day goes on, the nice thing about this particular card uh, is that you can track how the horse's condition is doing uh, without flipping the card over and looking in different spots. In each column, each vet check is in a separate column. Uh, all the way out to five, six spaces on this card. So you could use it for a 50 or a 100. Uh, and you can see, you could monitor, say, the horse's pulse downtime. You could look at how long it's taken the horse to recover throughout the day. Um, you could see um, in one easy glance, you know, was, where his gut sounds good at one point, now they've gone to a C uh, or worse. Uh, you could also evaluate lameness on here just to see if he had a, maybe a grade one lameness at one point and now it's worse and it's in the same leg. Um, so it's great to remind you of what the horse looked like during the day, even if you didn't do the veterinary exam at that particular check. Uh, and again, heart rate recovery, there's a space here to write it on each check, um, even places to write it rechecks. Certainly sometimes we see horses that have a questionable um, cardiac recovery index and we'll want to recheck them before they go back out and, and we'll write it down here. And, and so it's all information in one um, column format that you can see on one side of the card. It's just a lot more easy to use this way. Okay, so here we wanted to review what's required as a control vet at an endurance ride. First of all, certainly a pin um, that hopefully your scribe, between you and your scribe you will have. Uh, as far as each individual ride is going to have a map um, that's useful for the veterinary staff to know distances between veterinary checks uh, as well as where veterinary checks are and how to get to them if they're not looping back into one central camp. Uh, the other thing the map will tell us uh, is what type of work the horse has done prior to coming into a certain loop, how much elevation, how much climb, and whatnot. The other thing that's certainly 
necessary is to review the veterinary guideline book uh, as far as judging competitions. Uh, that, and this, if you don't have this book, it can be obtained from the AARC or ride management, but try to review that before each ride. Um, this is certainly a necessity. Stethoscope is required for GI sounds and heart rate, uh, sculpting rhythm during the ride in the vet checks. Uh, as well, a thermometer is required and certainly horses that get into trouble as far as thermoregulation, a uh, good, good idea to recheck those horses' temperatures. Another tool as a control veterinarian that we will use on occasion when we pull horses for lameness uh, to evaluate lameness, certainly the hoof testers are one required instrument. As well, a good hoof pick uh, is needed on occasion, so it's certainly a minimum of tools you should bring as a control veterinarian to a ride. As well, don't forget your watch as far as taking pulse. So here we have uh, coming into the out timer off of the second loop at approximately 32 miles. Um, again, it's about 11 o'clock. Uh, this is the gray horse that we examined uh, in the pre-veterinary exam check. And you can see the rider's adjusting her tack and probably the first thing she's gonna do after she gets her in time is to go uh, allow this horse to drink some water. Actually, her groom just brought the horse a bucket of water Okay, and you can see the groom that's assisting the rider is going ahead and checking this horse's pulse immediately after coming in and getting his end time to see if he's already down so he can walk to the pulse box. They're removing a the tack. This is a hold where we're going to have to examine the horses without tack. Apparently his pulse is not down yet. Well, I thought she was going to offer him some water there, but they offered him a bucket of water and, and uh, his pulse must be down. He's going to come on at a slow walk into the pulse box and present to the PNR staff for his pulse time. So it's important to note the time that it takes from the end time to the pulse down time uh, as poor horses that are much more fit obviously uh, for the conditions are going to recover quickly and some of these horses walk right off a trail offered water and walk straight into the pulse box and that's an indication of fitness. So you can see the horse is moving slow to get his pulse taken. He is aware of his surroundings, looking around. This, again, was a quite a, a quiet, seasoned individual. He's not a really high-strung Arab. So the PNR person is taking the horse's pulse currently. Usually they will count for 15 seconds, but if the pulse is up, they'll give it a solid minute to make sure his pulse is down. If they get a pulse of 60, she's riding now on the card and this will be considered the point in time which the whole time starts uh, if she meets the pulse of 60. And then she'll present to the veterinarian for the rest of the veterinary exam. So the writer has presented the card to the scribe and the veterinarian is gonna do a, the complete exam here. Typically they'll start, for efficiency's sake, start with the heart rate. And again, we're trotting these horses out 125 feet returning 125 feet for a total of 250 feet trot out to apply some stress to the animal and then reevaluate the heart rate at one minute from the start of trot. So his initial pulse is 52. We'll ask for the trot out, evaluate the gait and impulsion at this time. You can see the horse is freely moving forward. We're gonna wait for the gait assessment by the veterinarian on the line and we'll assess his gait and impulsion on the return trot. And now we're going to start with the first four criteria in an efficient manner. You should be able to finish the rest of this exam in the next 30 seconds in time to get the pulse for the second portion of the CRI. You can see he's palpated the back efficiently. He's moving to the back muscles uh, in the hip. Now he's checking the girth area. So he's already assessed the first four portions of the exam, mucous membrane color, capillary refill time, jugular fill, skin tint. He's assessed the back, he's assessed the muscle tone, and now he's getting his second heart rate. And as he's getting the heart rate, he's assessing the horse's attitude a little bit. 
I believe that 52. 52. Wounds are an A. Wounds are an A on this horse. Gut sounds are a C. Pat. Gut sounds. Make sure you use yeah, I will. Gut sounds are a C. So the veterinarian's talking to the rider about making sure that he's eating well. We're about 32 miles in, right? So eating and drinking well. So far, he okay. Has. Yep. Any urinate, urinated yet, or? Yes, he did at the first check. Okay, that he might be the horse. Slow coming in, so he probably will as soon as I get back to the Okay, trail. great. All right. Alrighty, thank you. Okay. Thank you. This horse is obviously in good shape. And really ready to go out on trail now, but he's got still again more tw 20 minutes or more to uh, continue to eat and drink, which is refueling him for the next loop. These horses are looking good. Uh, they're bright and alert. Most of these horses came straight to the water trough and drank. Uh, the riders look bright and alert, and so do the horses. You can get a glimpse of them here. The horse's willingness to drink and eat during the whole period, and it's a very important aspect that needs to be monitored uh, and conveyed to the veterinarian at the checkpoint. Okay, you can see there's a horse that's actually postured to urinate. That's something we do like to see. Uh, we monitor these horses, uh, their urination color, certainly. Uh, horses with myositis or rhabdomyolysis can, can develop myoglobinuria and a discolored urine. So these horses have had a 30 minute hold period here. You can see the horses are moving forward at a nice trot. So this horse has just been examined. He's a little short on the left hind. Apparently muscle tone is normal. They went ahead and put a blanket on this horse to keep him warm. So talking to the rider here to see if she wants to actually watch the horse go. Apparently metabolically he's very stable. But we're going to re-examine the horse here and watch his gait so the rider can be comfortable with what we're seeing. And you can see on the left hind, the point of the hip is dropping further. So he's definitely a grade three lame behind, which is unfortunate. Certainly very easy to see on the trot out, but more difficult to see on the trot back. So the veterinarian is going to re-examine this horse, try to pinpoint the source of lameness. You can see actually when the horse walks forward, I can detect a little bit of short strided. You compare the left hind to the right hind, you can see that he's short strided on the left hind, and that was the limb that was grade three lame. So she's going to keep the horse moving out there and massage him, and likely a veterinarian is going to walk over and re examine this horse just to make sure he's not starting to tie up, try to pinpoint the source of lameness. So we're going to discuss again with Dr. Ribley, who just examined this uh, horse that, that was lame in the left hind. Uh, so the grade lameness then can tell us a little bit about your examination. Yes, this horse uh, we watched in the movement phase. We were evaluating uh, this horse for lameness, either front end or back end. It was apparent trotting away that there was a consistent lameness in the hind end, uh, consistent on a straightaway, so which we would classify as a grade three uh, lameness. In this case, we could not uh, palpate any pathology in the leg, um, so we are giving the rider the advantage of a recheck. Uh, so she will rest the horse for uh, 30 minutes, allow the horse to eat, walk around, and she will represent the horse here again. Uh, with that consistent of the lameness, if it represents with the same status, that horse would not be allowed to continue down the trail. The rider's representing the horse for evaluation of the lameness. And you can actually see the left hind lameness is certainly not improved, if not a little worse than on the previous exam. We have a number of veterinarians here for a grouped opinion, so the rider feels comfortable with a unanimous opinion. So just discussing with the rider now the fact that we haven't found any specific problem to localize the lameness and signing off on the rider card for the elimination reason. So she's obviously comfortable with this decision and doesn't want to cause any harm.